In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create contact sheets, add metadata to the bottom, and then um, export your contact sheets as JPEGs, and then combine them into one PDF file. So I'm in the print module, and I have a collection selected here. And under this bar right here where it says you selected photos, um, this will basically put the photos that I have down here on the page. The other option would be to do all film strip photos and that would, let me just increase this so you can see, that would include all of the photos that are in that collection. So for now I'm just going to go back to selected photos. The other thing to note is if that your if your page is not in portrait orientation and it's in landscape orientation, you can go to page setup and you can change it here and hit OK. So coming back to the contact sheet, you're going to have single image slash contact sheet and then under image settings, you want these unchecked, all of them unchecked. Um, under page grid, you can move this slider. You can also just type in three. So you're going to have three rows by three columns. And because I only have one image selected right now, it's only putting up that one image since I have this selected photos selected in the drop down menu. So I'm going to select some images as an example and under here keep square will keep your uh, cells square if you uncheck you see it kind of zooms to fit so either one is fine I did want to show you that if you had a rotate to fit checked it would rotate everything so that it's the same orientation um, but it's easier to review the images with that unchecked so that portrait photos are in portrait orientation. So we have our um, page margins, which we can adjust. The rows and columns are three by three. Cell spacing, I noticed that the when there's two landscape images next to each other, there's, there's no space in between. So I'm going to increase my horizontal spacing a little bit. And then I can keep this square if I like. I'm going to turn the guides off. Now the next thing I want to include is my photo info. So right now it's just a sequence number, um, but you're going to want to include a lot more information. So I'm going to click Edit and this new window shows up where I can adjust what's going to show. So this is the area where we can edit what's showing up. And this is the example. So image number is right here, number one, and it's showing in the example, and then of the total number of images. And since there's 1135 images, that's showing here. So you can just delete these. Also notice that this slash is something that was just typed in. If I type a hyphen, that's going to change up here in the example. So the first thing I'm going to include is the image number. So if I go to image name, I can include the actual file name. And if I hit insert, It'll include that there, and then you'll also see it in the example. You can also, if you just want to include the number of the file name to make it shorter, notice that it just puts the number rather than the IMG ahead of that number. So I'll just go back to file name and put that in. And then I'm going to add a space and then put this character in, which is basically um, the shift. If you hold down shift and the slash key, you get that character. 
The next thing I want to do is put the date in. So under numbering, if you go to date, you'll see that you have this drop down menu with several options. So we want to include um, the month, day, and year. And you can see here that it shows up in the preview. Again, I'm going to put a space and then character and another space. If I don't put those spaces in, all this information runs together and it's difficult to see what's going on. The next thing I'm going to do is put the exposure information, which is right here under exit data. I'll hit exposure and you'll see in the example it gives the shutter and the aperture. So again, I'll hit space. And then I'm going to include the focal length. So again, from the same drop down menu, I'll select focal length. And you can see it's put it up here in the example. Space, character, oops, character, another space. And then the ISO. And it's run out of room here in the example, but um, the ISO should show. And then I want to save this information so that it's easy to create contact sheets with this information in the future. So I'm going to click on the preset drop down menu and then select save current settings as a new preset. And this window comes up. I'm going to just say AI. I'll hit create and you can see that now it's saved up here in the drop down menu. Now I'm going to select done. So if it's not already showing in your photo info drop down menu, for example, maybe you had caption selected, you just select the drop down menu and select your saved preset and you can see that um, all of that information is included here. So now that we have that, we want to export this. And by the way, you can also change the font size. And if you find that the information is running together, you can always change um, your margins or cell spacing to get, or cell size to give you more space. So I recommend printing to a JPEG file even if you're creating a PDF. And the reason for that is because if you use the PDF function that's in your print dialog box, it often changes the colors. So what I've noticed is that it'll increase the appearance of the exposure and it'll increase the saturation even if you didn't make any edits to your images. So because you want to have your contact sheets actually reflect the colors and exposure of your images, it's safer to select um, print to JPEG file and then just combine those JPEGs into a PDF. So select JPEG from the drop-down menu. You're going to uncheck draft mode printing because um, if you select that, you might notice you get lines, white lines across your images. So keep that unchecked. I like to keep the file re resolution at 300 PPI. And the reason for that is that then um, the person who receives the contact sheets, they can zoom in and see a bigger version. If we left it at 72 PPI, which is the normal resolution for screen files, we wouldn't really be able to zoom in without getting loss of resolution. Um, you can turn off the print sharpening. We don't need that. JPEG quality 100 is fine. And then the color management under the profile, again, um, since we're sharing this online with people who are going to see it on their screen, you can just select sRGB um, as the profile. And if you don't see that there, you can just select other and you get this um, pop-up and then you can select the different profiles. For example, Adobe RGB is also a good one to have in your list. That's great for printing the contact sheet and just hit OK. So 
Now the next step is to hit print to file and it should print two um, copies because if you look down here it says page one of two. So there should be, excuse me, not two copies but two pages. So hit print to file and then you get this dialog box and hit save. And in the left corner at the top you see it says preparing print job and there's a task status bar telling you the status of creating the contact sheet. So I'm going to navigate to my finder and you'll see that it created this folder contact sheet. If I expand it there's the two contact sheets. It has all the information that I wanted and here's the second one. So the next step now is to combine these into a PDF and I'm working on a Mac. I was told by a student that on a PC you can select the files, right click, and there's um, a function I think that's share to or send to PDF and that'll create a PDF file. Obviously I have a Mac so I can't show you that option and I can't really give you the specific details but you can check that out on your PC if you have one. Um, but we're going to use Adobe Acrobat and you need to make sure you're using Adobe Acrobat DC. Don't use Reader because Reader is just for reading PDFs. It doesn't give you any advanced options. So I'm going to go ahead and open that program. So you can see here at the top it says Acrobat Pro DC. And if I go to File, I can Create. And I'm going to combine files into a single PDF. And then I'm going to select Add Files. That opens this dialog window. And I'm going to select both files. You can select one and then click Command A on a Mac or Control A on a PC, and that'll select all the files. And then click Add Files. And it added them in the order that I want it in, but if it's not in the right order, you can simply click and then drag. So next I'm going to click Combine. And you can see that if I click this little Pages icon, it combined my JPEGs into two PDFs. Next, I need to save this. And there's two options, like if your file is really big, you can select the reduce file size. Um, otherwise, you can just um, save it as is. And it gives you this option to save in a recent folder. So I'm just going to save it in that same folder, but you could also select a new one. And I'll hit save. And you can see that the file name has updated here. And if I go to my finder, that's the PDF. And there are the files. And as I mentioned, because I saved this at 300 DPI, I can zoom in and get a pretty good view of the details without any loss of quality. So I hope that helps.